Diamat channel, welcome. Right, new patrons, first of all, we got, uh, last few days, we got Peter Fortinis, Sam Monroe, Katya Raven, hold tight on a Raven crew. <laughs> right, sorry. Um, uh, yeah, if you wanna support the channel, helps me make videos, which will help you learn to make jewelry, it's patreon.com forward slash diamond mount. Uh, click on the link in the description, you can learn all about it. So yeah, thank you to all the patrons, they enable this channel to continue, so very grateful. Um, right, this video, this is not really a start and finish kind of video, like instructional kind of thing, but, it's one of those videos where I'm experimenting and learning and then I'll show you what I'm up to so you can take from it whatever you want, if you want. I've seen this on antique rings a few times. I've always wanted to try it, but I've never done it before, so I'm experimenting. This was my first attempt and it's actually my most successful. So I did this and I thought, good, I'm gonna do a whole shank. So I've milled this out, and uh, but now I'm thinking that's too long for that's too wide. But anyway, I'll show you what happens. Uh, basically, as you can see, mill it out flat towards the end and then mill it wider and then I roll it back so you get you get this kind of effect uh it's a nice kind of little designy thing that might be useful to some people so I thought I'd do a video with it uh you don't have to do it that way you see like these are spread out you can spread it in but then when you roll it up rather than sticking out that little scrolly bit goes deep inside it and that might be preferable uh goes slightly tapered or even goes in straight because you might want to just create that you might just want to create that and then hollow it out and put a set of diamond in there or something i don't know anyway so i like the idea of that that sticking out so i'm trying to achieve that um yeah i had a few attempts it's not not working as uh as easy as i thought so just squashing the end a little bit turn it that way Turn it that way, just starting it off. Tighten up a little bit, a bit too much there. I'm slipping a bit. I'm gonna do a little bit more. <sighs> right, that's too much. Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna kneel that again and then start doing some hammering. I wanna try and get some width on it. Milling to neaten it up, and I'll, I will take measurements and find out exactly what I've got and how many rolls I can do, and then I can put that on video, and it'll be hopefully useful to someone. So that's been hammered loads, it's been milled out. Filing it up. Flatten the ends. Watch this, tin snips. Shortcut. Oh. All right, let's do a bit of rolling. Uh, okay, so like there, that can be rolled up. Not quite a sharp angle on it. Might cut that out. Okay, show you what we've got there. Hacked up. Just want this shape. I think that's gonna roll up quite nicely. I don't know, let's find out. But before I do that, let's get some measurements just in case it works well and then and you wanna have a go yourself. This metal is 8.7 wide, going down to its thinnest point, about nine. So it's almost like kind of square section, widest to the length. And, uh, oh yeah, width, width. That looks a bit too strong for me. I'm gonna thin it out. I'm gonna thin it out a bit because I need to physically be able to actually roll it. <laughs> so I'm gonna make it thinner. Okay, I've milled it a little bit more, something a bit more friendly looking, 0.55. Uh, width changed a little bit as well. Cool. Uh, okay, right, so I'm gonna paper it, just get it neat and sort of uniform, and then we'll start rolling it up. Okay, just kneeled it. Let's uh, see if we can do some rolling. So I'm pinching it right on the end. I'm just going in, like not even a millimeter. I'm gonna try and turn it up. 
I'm using these pliers. You might think maybe a wide set of pliers is good and you're probably right, but you might need grinding flat again. They're all a bit sort of worn out and rounded. That might be worth doing if you're gonna do this job. Uh, flat and get really sharp at the end of your pliers. I don't want to do it on these because I made an effort to round off one side for bending claws about and not marking them too much. I'll just see what I can do like this. Maybe this first little kink up. You can start off with a saw cut just to get it to fold up really tight. Because the tightness of this affects how it rolls. If you go too long with it, you can end up with a really kind of eggy shape. You want to fold up a minimum amount, just a tiny, tiny little bit there. Look. All right, this is first, first fold down, pushing it right down to the metal. Kneeled it again. what I've got. Giving it a beating, but it's uh, taking shape, look. Just annealed it for like the fourth time. It's, getting, it's a lot bigger now and easier to hold on to. I am nervous of putting big flats on it. Because if you're doing this for a ring shank and it was a kind of design feature, you want it obviously curled up nice and tight. You want it nice and round looking. I'm sort of approaching the end now, it's rolled right up to the metal where it's thickening up. So that's what I've ended up with. It's not difficult, but you just got to help yourself out by thinking ahead and having the metal a certain thickness. So yeah, point about half a mil, I think it was 0.55 on it, what I milled mine out to, and then that was as wide as it was long, the flat section. So obviously that's really wide, you could use that on a really big stone, but if you want to do a smaller version, just match that width to the length that you, you've thinned out to half a mil. Basically it seems to be the recipe that uh, worked on that. But just looking at it with my loop, is it this one? This is the one I just made, yeah? Looks like that. I'm wondering whether I can just fill it with solder and it might neaten it all up. suppose you kind of have to if you're finishing a ring nicely. So that's that one. This is the very first one I made when I didn't have a clue what I was doing. It's better. <laughs> I still can't beat the very first one. You can see I've experimented on it a little bit. Uh, yeah, I still can't beat that. I don't know what I did that was so special that I just got lucky basically. And it looks like the metal was thickened up as well. Maybe the metal's too thin on this one. That's why it's all slippery and horrible looking. I think it may have started off a bit thinner, but then it slowly increased in width and I was still coiling it up. That might actually have been a benefit. This one I thought I just had to have a long flat bit. Okay, this needs a bit more. <laughs> I was hoping to come up with a def definite kind of uh, answer with this video, but I'm still, still on questions. 
Okay, so anyway, I think you get the idea of it. If you want to have a go, have a go yourself. Please find out what the solution is and then let me know. Because uh, I still don't know. <laughs> okay, so that's it for this video. I wish I could find the photo of the jewellery I saw that motivated me to have a go at making this. It was like an old, like, 50s piece. It was either on, like, it was either for sale or it was on Pinterest or something. I don't know. I wish I saved the picture. I didn't. Um, but yeah, it had a coiled up shank, quite a chunky shank, but the top shoulder was coiled up going to the top bezel on quite a big stone, quite a long side of the stone. I'm gonna, I, I do want to learn it. I think it's quite a fun thing to do and you never see it that often. I have seen it a few times in the past, uh, but I've never done it until like these last few days. So I do, I do kind of want to master it. It bothers me that I don't know exactly what is the correct way to finish it. So I'm gonna experiment with this and then when I've got a definitive way to show you like a proper way to use the mills and the hammer and stuff and the angles and the measurements then we'll have a go at making this I'll show you how I made that as one long length uh, exactly what I did with the mills to what I started off with and what I did with the mills to get that and then hopefully I can make a useful video for someone who might want it anyway of course that's it for this video click like and subscribe and uh, stay tuned for more useful experimental kind of weird jewelry making videos in the future on the Diamond channel. See you later.